I'm excited up, about tonight. Oh, not much. I'm just, I'm pumped. We're talking action movies tonight. I, uh, I love these recommendation things. Yes. So for anyone that's tuning into this possibly for the first time, what these streams are is once a month, we all recommend one movie to each other, to each person. So each person ends up with three movies. We watch through them. So we'll be talking about 12 different movies tonight between all of us. Uh, we're not going to dive into heavy spoilers that might be, Little minor things, but nothing, nothing heavy spoilers. And this is going to be fun. I'm, I've seen all twelve of these movies, which is the first one of these streams. I've seen them all. You guys seem ready and excited, right? Oh, I've seen most of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't so, wait to get this <laughs> If you, well, let's see if I point correctly. Uh, not this way. That way. There. See that thing right there? My little logo. Keep your eye on that. We're now going to do. The movie that we're talking about will pop up right there. And just in case anyone pops in and they don't know what we're talking about, that movie will be right there in the corner. So no one can lose track on the movie. I'm I'm pumped up, man. This is a this nice. is we'll remember it, which is helpful. Like <laughs> yeah, it. it'll help us. Uh <laughs> check. <laughs> check in. Uh hey Tim Huck and Derek and Mike. Hope all we're, we're, we are having a great day. And I have not gotten my Camerons in yet because I just I'm ordered them. Me neither. Yeah, I, need to get, I still need to order them. I can Adrian? wait. Hey, hey, Adrian. Oh, kitten hey. paws. <laughs> what are kitten paws? Meow. Uh, Tiger Blue, how you doing? How you doing, Sarah? Hey, Sarah. Oh, not here. We got Howdy from Holland. Yeah. We got a hawk. There's a hawk in the chat. What a hawk. Yeah. room. Hit that like button, hawk. <laughs> Movie Hunter, how you doing, man? We got R and D Studios. Hello, what's going on? Hey. Yeah, let's let's dive into this. All right, go. You got Mama Blue right here. She got a shirt. Oh, Mama on. Blue. Did I miss my? Oh, I did miss Mama Blue. Right. Oh my God. I feel I have a North Lane shirt on. It's a it's a freaking metal band. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I've home. learned. I've learned from the past. Not everyone wears their collectors club on the recommendation. They wear it on the collectors club. So I intentionally didn't wear it because I thought you oh, guys okay. weren't gonna wear it. So I just happened <laughs> to be doing laundry, and this was clean. And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> like I gotta go get up and get mine. Put it on. <laughs> You're wearing your own oh, shirt. That counts. That's right. That's so I'm actually gonna give a choice. It's either going to be Mike or Huck going first, and then we'll go around. Who's interested in going first? I will take first. Oh, oh. all right. I mean, You're going to relax after that. So, all <laughs> oh, right. no. so let's, let's get started here. So once again, I rank all of these. So we'll go from the worst to the best. I will say none of these are terrible, though. So thank goodness on these recommendations. But that still doesn't mean there won't be a rant. You always got to have one rant in there. So first up at the bottom, we will have what some people call wow. Independence Day. Wow. What? ID4. I call it ID Snore. <laughs> I started watching this one twice and it put me to sleep both times. What? what the kids heck? nowadays with their attention it's, thing, you. it's probably the worst pacing I've ever seen in a movie <laughs> in my lifetime. The pacing is terrible. Wow. Oh, gosh. All right. So the movie doesn't start until I think it's like an hour in. When does DC explode? That's when the movie yeah. starts. So you guys that right. haven't seen that before, just skip to the explosion scene. Yeah. And that's when it actually becomes sort of an action movie. Yeah, if you want all this action, this is like <laughs> sci-fi drama. There's not enough action here. I got to be sure. Everything. everything. All right. Well, anyway, the first part of this movie you got Jeff Goldblum talking about something. It's like, come on, Jeff Goldblum. We know it's an alien evasion movie. Like, let's get to aliens attacking. I'm used to Mars attacks, okay? Like, I want to see aliens running around and having a good time. That's what this movie needed. Some comedy, some funny Martians in it. Oh, man. 
some funny Martians. Okay. Yeah, the Martians are hilarious. You can't make this kind of movie serious. It's so serious. I'm like, come on. If you're going to have an alien movie, make it fun, aliens. Mike, fun. never change. <laughs> <Right>? Minor. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll give the highlights. There's positives here. I'll give the positives. When Will Smith shows up, that's the best moment. You know, welcome to Earth. He punches an alien. Will Smith is having fun in this movie. So when Will Smith is on screen, it becomes a lot better. Also, Bill uh, Pulliam. Pullman. 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 There President you go. Pullman. The president. Yes, he is so good in this one. And when he gives his speech, he's like, I don't know, something rah rah Independence Day. We will go silently. <laughs> something like that. You guys know the speech. It, it's a very <laughs> good speech. That was speech. the other version. It's a yeah. very good speech. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a hell of a start. <laughs> And then when there's, okay, when they get into the fighter jet moments and you got, you know, the president and the fighter jet, then that becomes a really fun action moment. But then it builds up to not that much excitement by the end. You got Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith being like buddy cops now. Right? Jeff Goldblum should not be in this movie, by the way. Get him out of this movie. Cut all of his parts out of this movie. This movie should be an hour and a half. And usually I like Jeff Goldblum and every other movie I've seen him in, he's great. And here he's just like a Jeff board. And so just still, it's nothing, nothing from Jeff Goldblum here. So what? remove him from the movie. But anyway, the, I know we said no spoilers. I don't, you can't even spoiler this movie. There's not much that happens. There's some explosions. The aliens eventually die, but the aliens don't have any personality. You don't really learn too much about the aliens. It's like, come on, I need a little bit more from the aliens here. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in the middle. Once again, I fell asleep, so I don't know if I caught everything. You guys let me know. Um, well, but this movie is so blowing up. Did you see the, the fireball and the dog duck out just before the dog got roasted? Yes, 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 yes. Mr. Yeah, Cooper. That's when the movie yeah. starts, So It takes like an hour to get there. It has to be at least an hour until we get to that part. Yeah. Like, why is like you got Jeff Goldblum talking to his friend and just nonsense talking like, oh, we think this is an alien invasion. They're going to coordinate it. Well, no, duh. It's an alien invasion movie. I know this. Speed it up. Like, let's go <laughs> fast forward mode. Like, come on. And once again, it's my first time watching this, of course. So maybe when it came out back in the 90s, it was a new thing. But by now, we've seen so many space invasion kind of movies. It's just like, uh, I felt like I've seen this movie done better before. But, I mean, once you've seen Mars Attacks, it's just it's downhill from there. So now you Mars know, you know what, like saying, uh, what, I, what I think is is hitting Mike the syndrome that is hitting Mike. I get I get what you're saying is it's the same syndrome that when I showed my daughter Star Wars, she thought it was boring and walked out. And, Ooh. and watching What's Star Wars though, and watching it, I get why. It's boring because kids today on their phones and their games, everything's so action packed, and you know it's it's for your senses. So for you, maybe if you've seen too many stimulating alien movies, <laughs> maybe this one just wasn't stimulating enough. But in the '90s, this was absolutely jaw dropping. So yeah, oh, yeah. and I am do you done? <laughs> I, yeah. I want to mention so. I have a huge appreciation for miniatures. I don't feel like miniatures are used oh. near enough nowadays. Everything is CGI. Oh, no. do, do, you, do you like that they used miniatures? Because I, that, I, that's a huge I, thing. I didn't know they used miniatures, but that's cool. Yeah, the uh, movie yeah. looked good. There was no problem. They really blew up the White House. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know if they built the set. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that, that one of the greatest like, things is, is they built yeah. the set like sideways so, like this, so it was oh, like oh, facing yeah. down. So when yeah. it blows up, all the stuff comes towards the camera. So that's why yeah. it looks like it's just erupting on screen. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah, when there's explosions and there's action in the movie, it works. Explosions. explosions. There's not enough of that. Like, if you're doing a sci-fi movie, like, hardcore action, let's go. File this comedy. away, boys. File this away. <laughs> Mike needs lots of explosions. <laughs> If you're, well, this is an action. Oh, I, movie. I thought there was going to be more action in this movie. Okay, can you blame me? So I will agree with this though. If you didn't like the first one, never oh, in a million years touch the sequel. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah, <laughs> nothing happened. It does in that not movie. have really Will Smith. Noted. It does not have Will Smith to say. Oh the man, day. and Will Smith is so good. He's good in everything. So if he's not in it, just ain't gonna happen. 
But anyway, I didn't say I hated the movie. Let's get to the scores now. We will give this one a very solid, well, for recommendation, Derek, because I have been wanting to see this one. It's been on my watch list for the longest time. So I'll give the recommendation a four for sure. Yes, four for the recommendation. But the score I will give it will be a three. Solid, well-made movie. It's decent enough. Happy I saw it the one time. But I can't put it any higher than that because there's just no rewatchability. I tried rewatching it again. It put me to sleep again. <laughs> so no rewatchability. I'm going to have to put it a solid three. But it's not a bad movie. Thank goodness. It's not a two. Definitely not a two. Far from that. So, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So not well, terrible. Like I said, I didn't hate any of these movies. All right. But the next one, yay, now we get to have some fun movies. All right. <laughs> and the next two are very interchangeable on the quality. Uh, you asked me a different day. I could change the order here because they're both very, very good. But we will go with Battleship. Yes, Tim's recommendation. This movie is so fun. Oh, my gosh. Freaking entertaining. You tell a movie that starts right away, you are going in this movie. You got this guy that uh, he's in the Navy. He wants to impress this girl. And she wants like a burrito or something. So he has to break into a store to get a burrito. And it starts playing the Pink Panther song in the background. I'm like, what is this? This is awesome sauce. Give me more of this. The music is fantastic. Like this soundtrack is one of the it's most good. brilliant soundtracks I've ever heard. And it keeps going. I'm like, yes, just give a good. That's what Independence Day needed. A really good soundtrack. Like, come on. Uh, but yeah, excellent soundtrack. But then you got, so this person's in the Navy, impressing this lady, wants to marry her. But the the dad is also in the Navy, right? He's a captain, I think. Yeah, and that's an Admiral, I think he is, right? Admiral. Okay, there you go. That's Liam Neeson. So Liam Neeson's yeah. in this movie. That's really cool. And he's just giving him the cold shoulder. He's like, no, you can't marry her. That's just, <laughs> he's tough on him. That's a little sad. But anyway, it's an alien invasion movie. You get aliens attacking, but it's very energetic and action-packed. Lots of explosions. I liked how you compared it, Tim, to like a Transformers movie. Yes, a lot of action, a lot of moving parts the whole time. These machine alien things are like transforming. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And so with the story, they're invading Hawaii area which I thought was also cool because I'm like, oh, I recently visited Hawaii. So I recognize the landscapes here. That makes sense. Perfect. Uh, Jesse Plemons in this movie. He's also yeah. part of the Navy. He's great. He actually has a, a larger part than I expected. So it's right. great yeah, to see him. Real. And so you pretty much just have this Navy group that's defending with what ships they have. And all their ships are, you know, getting attacked by these aliens. And then eventually they get to... They get to a battleship at the end, I think, right? Do you call it a battleship or a destroyer? Yeah. I don't know what it was. It, it was a World War II battleship. Yes, there you go. Yeah. So that was cool, like a historical, famous battleship. I like that. And they're like, who are we going to get to help run this? And then you got the, like, veterans, like the old people, like, showing up on the boat, like, ready to go. Like, oh, my gosh, with the slow walk. This is fantastic. <laughs> And so then they get the battleship going, they take on the aliens. And then also there's another great side story here with the person that's, you know, the amputee with the legs. Um, he has a great little character arc as well. Like he's obviously very post-trauma, doesn't want to get up and do anything. But, you know, a lady is like, okay, let's go on a hike. Let's do something. And then he gets a chance to fight aliens and kick butt as well. So he has great action moments and he's like revitalized. So this movie has everything going for it. And it's not a long, boring movie. The worst thing you can recommend me is a long, boring movie. It's not long. It's not boring action-packed it fits the theme so yeah this movie just hit it out of the park very very good so on the recommendation this is a five a five so good on the recommendation <laughs> you know my taste now tim you got the taste right. <laughs> and then we'll go with the score of four i would re-watch this if i just want to have another fun time see aliens machines great soundtrack i can play it in the background battleship for sure so yes now, did you like the, the, the actual game moment where they're like B12 and the, the, the things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the movie where it actually references the game. They get a little reference in there. Yeah, the 15 seconds they bring the game into the movie. I'm like, there it is. 
Yeah, I don't get that <laughs> this movie at all. I don't know why people despise this one. I know it's because they say it's the title and it's based off a board game. Well, who cares? There's plenty of movies based off of board games and toys and all that stuff. I don't see why that's a big deal. I mean, Transformers, that's based off of toys. You know, why give Battleship grief? They worked the best they could with the Battleship game, too. There's a Battleship in there. There's water. I mean, they covered it. They covered the bases. Right? <laughs> and they made it fun. They made it fun and entertaining. So they did their job there. All right. So <laughs> that leaves number one, then. Number one is going to be Huck's recommendation with Con Air. And you talk about a really wow. unique premise oh, for amazing. a movie. How creative and unique is this? So let me try to... Remember this one again. Basically, well, stupidest idea, though. It's like, oh, let's go transport all these most dangerous cons in the world. It's like, okay, who came up with that plan, first of all? But anyway, we need it for the movie, so I'll let it pass. But you get these great con villains on there. You have, oh, um, I'm Cyrus forgetting the, the name. Yeah, Cyrus, Cyrus the Virus is like the main one. You got Diamond Dog. You got uh, Pinball with Dave Chappelle. He's yeah. funny in the movie. <laughs> Um, uh, Steve Buscemi's in there. Oh my gosh, Steve Buscemi has like the best role in here. He is so yeah. haunting and He's just so honest. Yeah, yes. You're when great. he shows up on screen, you just have this icky vibe about him. And uh -huh. they don't they show just enough with him. Like he has certain moments in the movie where you're like, I don't know what actually happened, but I can only imagine what he just did. And oh exactly. my gosh, this so is good. so haunting. Oh, he was, and then him at the end, like Vegas. Oh gosh, that was great. <laughs> um, but yeah, tons of action in this movie. Uh, you got Cusack. He's like the, what, the federal agent, I think, something like right. that. Yeah. And then Nicolas Cage in a more serious role. He's a con, but I guess he's not as villainous as the other cons. He's getting out, so... I don't even, I forgot why. It was a bunch of bullshit he even went to jail. Yeah, I'm like, why? And then why are they transporting him too with all the dangerous people? They're like, oh, we got one more spot left. Let's give it to this guy. I don't know. That was kind of random. He's already going there. Throw him on there. Yeah, but Nicolas Cage, he's great in the movie. And I like how they, he, he just plays so strategic because he's against these other cons, but he can't let the cons know or he's going to be torn apart. So he yeah. has to do these subtle things and he's trying to, you know, reach out for help. Uh, so, yes, I like that role for him. You know, he has a little bunny rabbit that he's <laughs> trying to get to his daughter for his daughter's birthday because he hasn't seen her yet. So yeah, that's a really bunny. sweet type of moment. Yes, put the bunny down. Of course, another <laughs> great line. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, tons of action, tons of explosions, uh, changes in locale too. I thought this was just going to be going to be on the plane the whole time, but they actually, you know, land the plane at one point and they have an action moment there as well. Uh, so this is everything I would want from an action movie: all star cast, tons of explosions. Uh, great character arcs for all the characters, including the villains. Oh, uh, and then, oh, yeah, Danny Trejo's in there, right? He's yeah. called yeah. Swamp Thing. Oh, my gosh. Oh, another just menacing villain. I mean, you just, like, want to hate these cons so much. They're just the worst of the worst. But they have such personality. It's like they're super oh, villains yeah. in their own kind of way with all their nicknames. And they everything. are, like, super villains, yeah. Oh, man. So good. And like I said, such a unique premise for a movie. I can't think of another movie where it's like, oh, let's put cons on an airplane and let's see what happens. So just on the uniqueness, I had to have it beat Battleship just by a little bit. But they're very close. They're very close. Very, very good. Connor, oh. you're, and, uh, you're gonna oh. buy, buy both of those, I imagine, right? Or did you already buy them? Well, I have Battleship. I got Battleship right here. Oh, yeah, you did hold that up. Yeah. Battleship. Um <laughs> Con Air, like I would be fine buying it, and I think you can get it for like five bucks the Blu ray. Mm -hmm. But that's a movie I could see eventually get the 4K. Like, how does that not have a 4K? It, it's well, Disney, I know it's Disney. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. You never know. You never know in the future. <laughs> it should happen because it's amazing. Yeah. 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 It's in the and, same uh, boat as The Rock. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Rock needs Come on, Criterion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely a movie I would watch again. I would love to have it in the collection. So, because it's very rewatchable. Uh, well, I'll give the recommendation first because, Huck, you knew I needed to see this one. It was on my watch list as well. Okay. I'll give it another five on the recommendation. And then for the score, like I said, very close with Battleship, we'll give it a four as well. 
Very, very good. So, hey, they two four movies out of the list. That's great. Uh, Cole Meany was in that movie too, and he's amazing. I, I love him with his obsession with his car. His it's car, yes. Oh my god, the car. You have to like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. And then, then he got. Uh, I can't think of his real name, but Bubba from Forrest Gump with his. Uh, he needs his. He's got the diabetes. Insulin. Yeah. Insulin. And he got the box on the plane. And the girl from. Uh, Total Recall. She's like the prison guard. She's awesome too. Yeah, for anyone yeah, that has that movie, is great. For anyone that hasn't watched Con Air, like make that a. If you just like fun action, Con Air is such a blast. It's it's top tier Nick Cage. Definitely oh, top. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. One of my favorite Nick Cage. That's, that's my favorite era of action movie. Yeah, a lot that. better than uh, Mandy. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually with you on Mandy. I, I was not a Mandy yeah. fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so well, cool, Mike. Looks like you had a good three pack. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, they're all great. Uh, overall, they were great. So happy with that. <laughs> As a whole, besides okay, Independence, Independence, Day, well, no, Independence Day got a three. Remember, people, three is a good score. <laughs> like most movies, you recommend me should be a three if it gets above a three you did like a really good job so i was happy i got two fours out of here i don't at least no twos there was no twos this time thank <laughs> goodness <laughs> and yeah, so funny I, I, guess, I was literally on the phone today tony and it was it was a like a maid service and they said hold please and when they went to hold it was your channel music it was ding, 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 you know, like Tony's music. That was the music on the phone. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, what is this music? I was like, I can't. And then I realized it was Tony's theme song. That's you're, awesome. You're, you're spreading Tony's the country. Tony's waiting music on his channel. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So I'm a, I'm happy Mike overall had good recommendations, though. Yes. And like now it's awesome. Derek. Derek's a tough one. Oh, Derek is so tough. oh boy, we're all nervous. Oh, now? Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I saved a snippet to intro each one just to tease Ooh. it. Ooh. Oh. This is a I couldn't I couldn't find the words to describe this movie as well as this person did. So I'm gonna read a review for this movie. And you're gonna have to guess which one I'm talking about. <laughs> TV Guide magazine. Another infantile right-wing fantasy from writer-director John Milieu. This cinematic embodiment of the paranoid delusions of militarists, survivalists, and television evangelists is definitely a film for the Reagan era. Red Dawn is simply too simplistic and inept to be taken seriously. With a score of 20 out of 100. <laughs> from, that, from that specific critic. Yeah. I read that after seeing it. I'm like, that's what I think. No boy. <laughs> so yeah, I never go to a Derek. All right. What are we doing? We did a raid for Christmas. That was about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I was excited to see this because I owned it. This is the one of the three movies I owned. I had the cool little steel book and all that from Best Buy. I got the steel book, yes. And like I know John Milius, he's just like the most ridiculous conservative hack person ever. And that's all I could think. Yeah, that one. That's all I could <laughs> think about the entire time. Like I could not. Like, the movie is well enough made. It's a perfectly fine movie. Two seconds into it, so I can understand Mike's complaint about Independence Day. As soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, no wonder he likes Red Dawn. It starts four, five, 45 seconds into the movie, and the <laughs> Russians are there. It <laughs> does. It starts, like, immediate. <laughs> okay, we're at school. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, my wife was like, where are they? Who is that? And I don't say it's like an hour in. It's like, oh, it's Cubans and Russians. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because eighty. Oh, Lord. Um, That's eighty. <laughs> so like Patrick Swayze, who's like a thirty-five-year-old high school student, and Charlie Sheen, who's apparently his brother, that they eventually get across by the end of the movie, um, and his friends create the Wolverines, this little military Wolverine. pack up in the wood in the woods. <laughs> and somehow these five kids, you know, essentially to an extent, take back the town from these, you know, invaders. I just like within seconds of the movie starting, I was like, they would nuke that town so fast. 18 people live there. Like, <laughs> like how did this happen? <laughs> I just thought the premise was so ridiculous. So that's why I thought that review. Man, was so I've been thinking to a movie now. 
well, at least this one. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I know the guy who made it to enough, not enough personally, but it's like, God, this is exactly what he thinks. Like, I just know that because he's literally the guy that Walter from Big Lebowski is based on. Like, that's the guy who made Red Dawn, <laughs> like John Goodman and Big Lebowski. <laughs> but yeah. he's a real person, so it's hilarious. So, yeah, I, don't know, I mean, that's essentially the movie. These little military kids fight back slowly. You know, it's kind of fun for a little bit where they get a few of the high ranking guys just having fun taking pictures in the pretty Colorado vistas. And then they find this camp where like all their dads are because they were troublemakers, which means they owned weapons, I assume. Um, Harry Dean Stanton being one of them, which was a highlight of the movie. And it was at that point I realized that this movie was also a South Park episode called Grey Dawn that never. No fun it dawned on me that it was making fun of Red Dawn because I hadn't seen it. Great. And that movie was about parents being so lazy because they wanted to sleep in that they made the children fight all the old people in the town who got everything done before the parents woke up, which is essentially all I could think of through the rest of this movie. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what I that was <laughs> that's, kind of, that's where my mind was in this. Yeah, it's just, it's it's too ridiculous to be taken seriously, but the movie's played too seriously for it to be fun. And that's why I didn't enjoy it. If it would have been like a really clever, dark comedy, it would have been brilliant. <laughs> but it was played so seriously that I couldn't even enjoy it on an ironic level. It gets pretty dark towards the end. The whole thing is. With no comedy, dark. though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dark without comedy. Like this is making me laugh for the wrong reasons. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> because I know the guy who made this. What he was thinking the entire time while he was making this movie. <laughs> and that's all I could think about. Uh, like if had anyone else made this, it might have been a different scenario. But yeah, that's that's where this movie hit for me. It was just like this is so serious, but it's so dumb and unrealistic. <laughs> but it's being taken so seriously that I can't even have fun with it. Oh. Which is what I like in my action movies. Hence my loving of Con Air and things like that. It's just so stupid, but it's so much fun. That's my kind of action, personally. But it, it's a well-made movie. Like, it's not, like, bad. The actors are fine. Jennifer Grey's in it. You got Leah Thompson in it. Charlie Sheen, like I said. C. Thomas Howell. That's and, a good cast. You know, That's a really good cast. Oh, yeah. Ben Johnson was in it. It could oh, drive yeah. me crazy trying to figure out who Ben Johnson was until the credits. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if if you like very right wing propaganda movies, you'll probably love Red Dawn. Or if you grew up with it and you have nostalgia for it, which I don't, obviously, because it's my first time watching it. So then I could see someone liking this movie a lot. Otherwise, it's like this movie is ridiculous and not in a fun way because, like I said, it was taken too seriously to be fun. Uh, it's no chart. It's not like a Chuck Norris movie from the '80s where it's like, yeah, go get it, kill everybody, Chuck. Those are the best kinds. Uh, so as a recommendation, I'd give it a four because I've always wanted to watch the movie and I owned it, so that's a plus. Uh, but the movie, Mike, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to give you the dreaded two out of five. I'm going to agree with Guy from Washington TV Guide Magazine <laughs> and give it a 20 out of 100. <laughs> uh, for the red I have a friend. And I was, and I was <laughs> she liked it. My wife liked it less than I did. Uh, <laughs> Good stuff. It was fun. Her comments were the best part. Uh, <laughs> I think I know what your number two will be. I was considering, uh, like, I'm like, wonder what the the remake would be like because I, I know. I, I I'm like, it's a good thing you didn't see the remake. Yeah, I'm like, I know. I've heard nothing good about the remake. At least the old yeah. one is like old. I 80s love the remake. Movie. The remake's great as well. <laughs> and the remake would be even more unrealistic because you got the whole cell phone age going on and the internets. It's like now it really wouldn't happen. In the 80s, at least you could be like, yeah, maybe they're really stupid. But like, in, in the <laughs> 2000s, it's, terrible. it's like, yeah, they would like be like, hello, government, and bomb everybody. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get into the uh, Powers Booth stuff, which he was cool. <laughs> I totally forgot I was going to talk about this. But uh, Leah Thompson like apparently falls madly in love with Powers Booth after knowing him for five minutes. And after spoiler alert, he gets killed because it's a war movie. She's like, I'll never love again. I'm like, you knew the guy for five minutes and he's 50 years older than you. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> I love Lee Thompson, though. So, you know, that's good. Okay. On to the next one. Tim's got it on the ready. I think Morgan I know. Morgan Freeman disliked the movie and said years later, at it, after its release, did any of you see the movie? Don't. <laughs> Just don't. Oh, my God. And this movie was Hard Rain from, what, 1998, I think? Yeah. Uh, with Christian Slater, it was when they were really trying to make him an action star. So hard. And it had uh, Mini Driver, and he got Randy Quaid yet again in another supporting role, which is always fun, especially in the 90s, before he went crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, this movie is like the 90s action movies I like, where they're just... This is the so dumb, it's fun kind of action movie. I had to watch it on Pluto, though, which adds three hours of commercials. <laughs> so if I could watch it without commercials, I'd probably really like it because it's a pretty short, like 90-something minutes long. Um, the gist of this one is you're in a town that I honestly don't remember if they name that is under hard rain. You know, it's raining crazy. <laughs> they're they're opening the floodgates. They're evacuating the town. The sheriff is Randy Quaid. And he's trying to keep everyone safe and get everyone out. Betty White won't leave. She's in it, by the way. That's fun. Uh she won't listen to her husband who knows better. <laughs> so Morgan Freeman and his band of misfits is uh, trying to rob Christian Slater and Ed Asner, who are driving an armored truck full of cash, who get stuck in the flood because hard rain. And uh, <laughs> yeah. things don't go right. And Christian Slater tries to do the right thing. And he tries to hide the money so they can't get it. And Morgan Freeman and his band of misfits are chasing him and then randy quaid tries to get in on the action because he gets wise to what's going on so eventually morgan freeman and christian slater kind of have to team up to stop the even worse bad guys it's it's a fun movie it's definitely that's, that's the best movie school. i've seen yeah it's like it's the stupid concept action movie that i have fun with i'm like yeah weather Woo. it was gonna <laughs> be called the flood and then they changed it for some reason uh, but yeah, the, it's the best movie I've ever seen with a jet ski chase down a high school hallway. <laughs> if there was an option nice. for that, I would have it. But uh, I understand why like I hadn't seen it till now, because not a lot of people praise this movie. It isn't great, but it's exactly the kind of dumb action movie I was in the mood for, luckily, when I watched it. So I had fun with it. I mean, that's that's really the whole movie is... Christian Slater tries to keep Morgan Freeman from getting all this money because it's his job and he's a good guy, and then they have to team up and Randy Quaid's evil. Hard Rain. What's the better Hard Rain movie? Hard Rain or Crawl? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. If Hard Rain had more uh, crocodiles in it, it'd probably win. Right? No <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you to recommend me a movie with lots of flooding going on, and then I can pick my favorite. You're right, though. That Hard Rain kind of just kind of forgotten almost. Yeah, don't yeah. Rain. it just starts too, like 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 Red Dawn. The movie just starts. It's already yeah. like mid flood, and I'm like, okay, that's all I need to know. It's wet. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it gets, is, keeps it getting wet. Yeah, and it, you know, it has a good ticking clock element to it because they like tell you within the first few minutes when they get stopped in the armored car, like, oh, we've been in here for like an hour and the water's already up to our knees, you know. And then by the time he gets back to the armored truck at the end of the movie, it's like you can barely see the roof of the car. So it's fun. And uh, yeah, I had fun with it. You know. <laughs> Is it something I'd rewatch without commercials? Yeah. But probably not for a while. Um, I would give it I would give it a solid three across the board, like recommendation wise, because yeah, I haven't seen it, so I'll watch it three. Uh, as a movie, it was fun enough that I would rewatch it, so I'd give it a three. But it's nothing special to give any higher than that. <laughs> But if you like movies with a lot of rain in them, Hard Rain is for you. If you like rain, that's all I should say. Yeah. Right. So we, I think we know what, uh, what's next. At least what Huck does, because it's his. I watch this one right it was also my wife's favorite Huck, so you win that award, too. Oh, I would tell her. And I yeah. found this little fact about it that I thought was fun. I tried to find. I struggled to find something <laughs> funny to talk about. Uh, <laughs> Russell, but this is the best thing I found. <laughs> In 2014, Time Out told several film critics, directors, actors, and stunt actors to list their top action films, and Breakdown was listed at 90th place on the list. <laughs> 90th, wow. 
but when you consider every action movie ever made, 90. I thing. guess not so bad. Top yeah, right. Head. I'm like, that's funny because it sounds bad, but it's yeah. look at that. That comment though came before talking about this. Yeah, so, before you oh. mentioned it. Yep. <laughs> nice. Yeah, breakdown. I was uh, what, 1997. Nice swift 93 minutes of yep. fun. Um, it takes a, a minute to get going, but you know you have to get to know your characters, which some movies fail to do. Uh, <laughs> oh, I won't say what those were. Um, but yeah, it's just Kurt Russell with his wife Kathleen Quinlan from Apollo 13, who's always good. Driving, they're moving from I can't remember where they're from, but they're going to California and they're driving just through the middle of the desert trying to get there, kind of a thing. In their brand new fancy car that doesn't look nice at all, but I guess it was a nice car in 1997. And uh, they do bad by MC Ganey, Swamp Thing of Con Air. So I thought that was cool. That's right. yeah. That's swamp. And, uh, <laughs> he's the guy who flies the plane in Con Air once they kill the pilots. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so he kind of runs them off the road a tad. And then uh, he gives them the business at the gas station. And then all of a sudden, his car breaks down right after he talks to this really sleazy character. Suspicious, no? And then, and then this nice truck driver, played by J.T. Walsh, who's amazing. J.T. is so good. That was his last movie. I forgot Breakdown was... I was thinking Pleasantville was his last movie, because they both came out the same year. But I guess Breakdown was his last movie. He's the, he's the villain of this one. Well, they all are, besides Kurt Russell. Uh, <laughs> he stops and like offers him a ride to the five miles down the road to this diner and they can call a tow truck. And then Kurt Russell's like, I don't want to leave the car because it's brand new. So just the <laughs> wife goes with, because they're stupid. And uh, <laughs> and then he's like looking at the car, waiting for it to cool down. And then yeah. he notices some wires are detached and he's like, oh, I fixed it. Plug. So someone tampered with the car. Guess who? Uh <laughs> He goes to the diner and no one's seen her and no one knows what he's talking about. So he freaks out and he's driving down the highway. He finds JT Walsh again, finds the semi truck, same truck, same driver. And he pretends he doesn't know who he is. And then he waves down a police officer who doesn't know what's going on. And uh, yeah, they don't have the wife's not on the truck or in the cab. And JT Walsh in this scene, he's so convincing that he doesn't remember Kurt Russell that I believed him. Like, he's such a good actor. It's ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, maybe he didn't do it. Like, no, I saw him when he did. No, he did. <laughs> Damn you, JT Walsh. You're so good. Uh, <laughs> so the, the other 90 minutes of the movie is essentially Kurt Russell trying to figure out where his wife went. He knows JT Walsh and friends are in cahoots. So they try to get him to basically take a whole bunch of money out of the bank to bribe him or to pay them to get his wife back. But Kurt Russell won't have that because he's Kurt Russell. So he goes all Kurt Russell on him. <laughs> it's it's a tremendous Russell. result. And it, it's a fun little action movie, like I said. And, and the ending is just amazing. I won't spoil it. But uh, it's great. JT Walsh. JT Walsh's last scene in film ever is a doozy. I'll give him it's a way to go out. <laughs> yeah. He went out with a bang. Let's put it that way. And what's great is Kurt isn't like an action, like he doesn't just serve everyone their asses. Like he's no. got to he's got to be strategic and, and hide and, and strike when the, the time is right. And I like that sort of, it's almost like unlawful entry. You know, he's not the cop in that one. He's not the hero, but he's got to, at the right moment, be that guy. And it's just, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a real man. He's like Bruce Willis in the first Die Hard, you know, when he had to try. <laughs> yeah. but without being a cop but yeah like he's hanging off the bottom of the semi truck while it's driving he's got to climb out of the top of it you know stuff like that it's good yeah it's a, it was a fun one I would, I would re-watch it again like I said it's a nice short movie if any of these movies were any longer I'd be like why is it still going because like, yeah. I love the short little 90 minute action movies they're just so fun yep. and they just don't make them anymore it's a shame everything right. has to be like two hours now yeah uh, <laughs> so it's like 93 minutes hell yeah let's do this but yeah, it was a fun one. Breakdown was good. I would, if it wasn't out of print and egregiously overpriced, I would potentially buy that Paramount Presents Breakdown Blu-ray. So when the inevitable 4K comes out, I might grab it. Because I haven't He's, seen enough Kurt Russell movies, really. I, like, I, I never think that. Like, outside of John Carpenter movies, I've seen maybe a handful of Kurt Russell movies. It's weird. Oh, he's great. He's so I good. Guess, yeah, if, maybe the imprint is still in print. I'm That's not true. sure. 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot it, they did. Yeah, because that, that's region free, anyways. Nice. Good and that's always fluctuating on Amazon. It's gone from 30 to 23, 30 to 23. It's, it's worth every penny, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun one. Yeah. And I, and I like all the actors in it, too. Like I said, JT Walsh is such a damn good actor. Like, he convinced me that he was innocent, and I saw what he did. Yeah. I know you're in on this, JT Walsh. But, uh, yeah, I would I would give this one... Um. Like I didn't, it's not the like the new wheel or anything. So I would gi I would give the recommendation a four because I was excited to see it, especially once that Blu-ray came out. And everyone's like, "Breakdown's the best thing ever," and I was like, "Oh yeah." That movie. <laughs> and, uh, so it made me want to see it more, and I like Kurt Russell. I just apparently don't watch any movies he's in that John Carpenter didn't direct. And uh, the movie, I would, I'd give it, I'd give it just the the tip of the scale to that three and a half, just to make it a tad above Hard Rain. But they're pretty close. You know, like depending on my mood, I'd watch either or. Yeah, they're fun ones. Cool. <laughs> I'll take it. Huck's going to win tonight. He's got all of them so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, just, <laughs> I still got Tim to worry about. <laughs> I agree. I miss movies being... Everything feels like it's two plus hours now. Well, wait till you hear the three I have. They are all right at about 90 to 93 minutes. All three. Awesome. You're welcome, I guess. <laughs> all righty, Huck. Finishing is good. Yeah, that's All essentially right. the classy person's breakdown. All right. Hmm. So <laughs> I, I will start off by saying all three of these were a really good watch. Um, and and they are they are separated with distinctions as to why they are where they are. Now, the one in third place is going to be sisu sorry mike but it's sisu um it's basically yeah look at that thing so it, mike had said that it's kind of like a, a john wick but with this really old dude with nazis <laughs> right <laughs> so i mean he's basically this um this ex-soldier who who finds gold he strikes it rich and he's got all these bags of gold with him and then randomly for no reason are these nazis that are driving like four or five vehicles in the middle of nowhere to get from point a to point b so literally the concept <laughs> literally has no real story you don't know where they're going you don't know what's happening other than old guy meets nazis and that's it and what <laughs> happens during this time and and so i think the 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 slight i mean obviously he's he's this war hardened guy who's who's you know he's hard to kill like he just he never dies that's the thing is you can't kill him so there's sort of this like not supernatural but kind of like well what why what is it that keeps this guy moving it keeps him going and um and and the nazis are really good they're super uh, superficial right they're all just a stereotype every one of them they're just a holes nothing super nice about any of them and they're toting a um a truckload of women with them that look down on their luck because they just took these women and of course you know once he comes across this thing he's gonna have to you know in inevitably inadvertently deals with them as well in in their defense sort of like so once he gets upon them and starts taking them out, he sort of saves their truck and then they become part of the fight, which was great. I mean, again, superficially show like, like the girl takes the truck and they flip the thing up and just, <laughs> <laughs> them down. They're just painting them. Like remember Rambo when, when he just turns the gun around, he just pink mists that guy. Just, dee, 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 dee. Just, Man, I want to watch this movie again. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, that, so that was fun. And, you know, and, and him just trying to, take them all on and survive it wasn't like i, I think that the slight disconnect is uh, of all three films there was just no emotion in this film it was all paint by numbers like go to a b and c can't can't wait to see where it goes whereas like the other ones and i'll get to them there's there's some a lot of heart and connective tissue in those films that rank them higher than this and like again like with Die Hard comparing Sisu to Die Hard or even Nobody I think Nobody is a better Die Hard with an old guy older guy than Sisu but the guy does deliver he does what he's supposed to do and uh and it was a fun flick it was fun so yeah yeah there you go so you know and it's got a, a hilarious ending I won't tell you what happens to, to one of the Nazis but it was kind of fun <laughs> but it, 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 it reminded me of Dr. Uh, Strangelove <laughs> okay, first of all, so yeah so so good flick like you said uh i will say 
recommendation, I'll, I'll give it a three because you said it was on the John Wick level, but I didn't quite, or, or you know, die hard John Wick, didn't quite feel it that way. But then, then the movie's also a good solid three. So I give you a double threes on that. Just boom, boom. I'll take it. Three, three. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. All right, now, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm literally sitting here, like as I'm sitting here, I, like all night, I, I told Becky, I said, I don't know who's going to be number one until literally right this moment. And I'm, <laughs> okay, that's how good these two are. Now, all right, I'm going to put, all right, I'm going to put this one at number two. And I mean, they are just off by this much. And I'm going to tell you why this one's at number two. Tim, it's going to be cellular. We're going number two. And I mean, look, it was it was it was number one probably like ten minutes ago. But I'll tell you why? Okay, so it's like the other movie, you said like Red Dawn just credits and then it starts. This movie right. starts. I mean, it, it reminded me, Mike, a lot of your recommendation of Unhinged that you gave me. Yeah, very top, similar. Which is why I almost put Cellular there, Mike. It was an excellent recommendation because it just comes out of the gate swinging. And it just, they bust into Kim Basinger's house and basically kidnap her, right? And her son, because the, her husband has something in a safety deposit box that you learn later that has some stuff on it that incriminates these bad guys. And of course the, the premise is she gets kidnapped, put in this room where there's a phone on the wall and uh, Jason Statham is the main bad guy, like, like one of the, the guys. And he busts the phone apart, you know, shreds it to pieces, leaves the room, locks her in the room. Now, she's a science teacher. So she knows all about resistors and transistors and wires and all that. So you you literally did the one thing to the one person who can fix that. <laughs> so she manages to put a phone together and like tap the wires together and just randomly, like until a phone, a phone rings. And that phone is Captain America. Right? It's Chris Evans. <laughs> And I, I did look, and this is right around when he did Fantastic Four. So I think mm -hmm. this this is 2004, and it's uh, and yeah, let, let's see what what is the lean runtime on this? Yeah, hour and 34 minutes. So it's it doesn't overstay its welcome at all. Starts going. Chris Evans is great. I mean, he is super good in this film, and uh, it's all about keeping that phone call going because because it was a random call. This is also, you know, he can't, you know, recall that number on his phone it's not like two cell phones talking to each other it's a landline that if oh, it okay. loses this call it's all over for her and of course he doesn't believe her at first and then he starts to believe her william h macy is in this oh my god he's so great as the cop he goes in he says there's a woman on this phone and she says she's been kidnapped and he gives him the phone and and it, it all just keeps rolling and there's all these little things going on and uh I, it, it was just the pace, dude. It just reminded me of Unhinged. It was fantastic. It just kept going. Kim Basinger, like, God bless her. Every time she was on camera, she had to just pour on the emotion because that's that that's the heart. So that's the thing that was missing from Sisu is, is prevalent in Cellular all the way through, which is Basinger's ridiculous performance in, in a good way. It just so good. <laughs> Um, and then all the, you know, the bad guys twist and turns, you know, won't give too many of that away, but that was kind of fun. Uh, William H. Macy and things that he discovers along the way. And you're just kind of like, part of you is like, come on, come on, come on, you know? <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'll just stop there with the description, but yeah, I mean, Tim, so I, like, I think you dialed, you dialed me in on, on the recommendations. So we're going to go five on that. I think you killed it on the recommendation. And it's like a four. This is a solid four movie. It's it's really up there for me. Like as soon as I saw it, the first thing I did was, man, I got to find this at the swap meet. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like like it is really good. Just like Mike, you're unhinged. It was like, it just I loved it. It was so good, so good. And I I, I can't believe it's not number one. But Derek, you sit atop the number one. And the I reason I say this, and Tim, I think you'll appreciate this. Derek just doesn't quite get me a lot. But today, I will say, I think he did a fantastic job finding something the Huckster clicked with. And this is a, a movie from 1976, right? Uh, and it's yep. Assault on Precinct 13 is the name of this film. It's John Carpenter. And um, and I had never seen this before. It's uh, So I want to get this guy's name right. So it stars Austin Stoker, is the, the who I'd never really heard of. 
Um, but also Tony Burton's in this. Remember the guy from Rocky? He's like Apollo Creed's like trainer. He's in this. It's really great. And so the concept, <laughs> the concept is at the very beginning. So here's the, I guess here's the thing. Maybe you guys know if you've seen it more than once. So these mm -hmm. bad guys are just driving around. It's basically they're going to own the town because the beginning is uh, some of their guys who are stealing like weapons and stuff were caught and murdered by, by cops. So they're like, we're going to take this town. And the bad guys don't even really talk. You know, they're kind of like mysterious. They, they just, I think there's very little dialogue between them. Uh, and they're just sort of pacing up and down this subdivision, this road, just creepily. Right. And then there's, there's this ice cream guy who also keeps driving around, but he keeps seeing the car and it freaks him out a little bit. So he pulls over and there's this dad and his daughter that pull over. And I love this girl. The girl, the girl is, of course, if, if we've all seen those Escape from Witch Mountain movies, right? <laughs> like Kim Richards, right? I think that's her name. Uh, she's the, the, the ice cream girl. So she goes, she goes get an ice cream cone and she wants a, a swirl. She wants a mix. And, you know, the guy's like, uh, I'm closed. And she's like, oh, come on, mister, here's money. And so he gives her the cone. She walks away. Then the bad guys show up because I don't know. They just feel like killing someone. It was just literally a random, like pointless. Yeah. Like, they, they didn't have it in for the ice cream, man. It's not like they are lactose intolerant and hated ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Pull up and kill the ice cream guy who, by the way, had a gun in there. So he was kind of ready to defend himself. He, he always felt to me like he knew them for, from the, that, some reason. I, and that's, 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 that's what I felt that was missing. Cause I feel like, yeah, he was watching the car a lot. Like, do they know him? Does he, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so the girl comes back and says, mister, I wanted a swirl. But as she's just standing there holding the thing, the bad guy is actually on the other side of the car window because he pulled the ice cream dude out already. And he just, without looking, he just goes, pew. Yeah. <laughs> and the girl's like, Ugh. And they show the whole thing. Like, oh, the blood hits her. She's still holding the ice cream cone dead. I'm like, wow, man. Oh, guts. Oh, I guess. Guess. That was guts. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I knew, like, watching this, I'm like, oh, yeah, these dudes, yeah, my, my collector's club dudes, they, they like this stuff. I, I know this is like, because <laughs> it, it was raw. It was something different. You know, you don't, they say you, you don't kill kids. You don't kill animals. Like, you don't do that. But early Carpenter is like, well, I am. Like, and, and it was a Disney darling. Like Disney had a, a, a an uproar having that happen to their actress. You know, oh, funny, say, don't know do it. And he goes, okay, I won't. And then he puts the movie out until totally he gets killed. So then, because of that, the dad finds her and he's grief stricken, and he finds the, this precinct that's basically being shut down. And and our hero is here for the one night. It's literally only open for fifteen more hours. And nothing is supposed to happen here. You know, they're even making fun of him, like, <laughs> have fun tonight. And he's like, great, thanks a lot. I get the, the crap job. And then it turns into this assault on Precinct 13 because they, he, the, the dad follows them. And then they get out of the car. He shoots the guy that killed his daughter and then runs to the precinct for safety. And then that's when the entire, like, all the bad guys, like, all the gangs from everywhere, it was very warriors. I felt like the warriors, you know, where all they oh, all yeah. come out and they're all quiet. They all have silencers on their gun. And there's reasons for that too. Um, but yeah, just, and then the characters inside, I thought were fantastic. The, the, the criminals were really interesting. And, uh, and I thought Carpenter's direction, you know, was really on point. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, I thought because Derek, you, you sort of killed it on this one. I felt like I wanted to give Derek the W tonight. <laughs> give me the point. The <laughs> yeah. the uh, and, and because it was really one that I liked so much that I, I kept talking about it with my wife. And then, and we were looking up stuff. You know, a movie is good when you want to look up stuff. Like what happened? Who is that actress, man? And why was that other actress really bad? You know, like you have the one actress who's bad and. Oh, Tiana, you gotta check it out. It's so good. Yeah. It, it is a uh, a really gritty action flick. It's good. Ending's good. The acting's good. Uh, so, whew, I'm spent, y'all. So, I'm gonna say, um, so Derek, I'll say the the recommendation. I don't know. I've, I'm gonna have to also give you credit and give you a five on this uh, okay. because okay. It, because I don't think we've had a five between us. And, and also, same score. It's the same score as, as Tim's. It's a four. Because like right. I said, those, those movies I love equally, but because of sort of that sort of extra secret sauce of, I don't know, killing the ice cream girl. What? You know? <laughs> they didn't kill the kid. 
and cellular. So I was like, all right, well, they didn't take a chance. They weren't gutsy enough. But um, there you go. So I'm going to give you numero So now I know. You'll watch movies where children get murdered, but not <laughs> get people get bisexual. No, no, no. no, no. It's not the takeaway. It's not the takeaway. If I find the movie, it's not the takeaway. All right, so Tim, you're number one. <laughs> Eric's last. That's just a good movie, though. It's just a fun, like, it's super fun. Like, Assault on Precinct 13. And the camaraderie between, like, the cop and, like, the main uh, inmate. They're awesome together. Like, I love those guys, and they're not in, like, anything else. There's also a shot, by the way, so the, the inmate, this character, Napoleon, there's a shot. It, it, I don't know if it was an accident, but, you know, he's, at some point, he's got to let the inmates arm themselves to help defend the precinct. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. and I swear there's a shot. He's got a shotgun and then Napoleon comes in and the, and the sheriff hands him the gun. And I mean, as the shotgun literally hits this point, boom, like, like he just grabs it and fires it like in this incredible moment of like, it was so fast. I feel like he wasn't supposed to shoot it that quick, but it came out so fast. It was like, wow, that guy is good. It, it makes you think <laughs> that character has been around shotguns all of his life. So whether it was an accident or intentional, so li it's little things like that that I get a kick out of. Nice. That's a yeah. solid movie, though. Yeah, I rewatched it last year. I was like, oh, this movie's really good. And it's pre-Halloween Carpenter, too. It's like people always kind of forget that if they even know of it. Yeah, I remember a lot. Some people think that he just started with Halloween. Yeah, that was a movie he did before Halloween. And it was yeah. it's, up there. it's up there in my John Carpenter list. I have to dig it up sure. on the, is that Scream or Shout? factory this is a three factory yeah that's what i have yeah that's cheap yeah. too like the the blu-ray is cheap at least it's like 15 bucks i think. mean the 4k will be on its way <laughs> well I have to for, as soon as i buy it then the 14s gets me out yeah i can't remember <laughs> like is there one i was trying to remember it's john carpenter you think there would have been one by now that's all they make yeah. at screen factory anymore all right so all right, Kevin. all right so we'll dive into mine I'm going to preface this with I didn't dislike any. Uh, I like them all at different ranges, but there's no shade on any of them, uh, even though I don't want anything I say to sound like shade. But the first one, I was shocked that this is going to be a number three. Uh, it's a Jean-Claude Van Damme. Ah, oh, shit. There goes my stream. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, boo. All right. So oh, I, many of them. I oh, will no. say... I did not grow up watching Van Damme. I grew up watching Arnold. I grew up watching Stallone. I didn't really watch Van Damme much. And traditionally, Van Damme doesn't offer me as much of like he has the martial arts actual skill, but he doesn't have those witty one-liners that the other guys do often. His stuff comes across a little more serious. Uh, so that's kind of what happened in this. I wasn't getting the like fun aspect as much but this movie starts off with uh you know a family that has two twins that end up getting murdered and the twins end up getting separated so you got two van dams growing up in completely different parts of the the world they end up coming together early in the movie somehow growing up in one in hong kong and one in france they still talk the same they still <laughs> have a belgian accent <laughs> they still can't speak yeah <laughs> See, what do you mean it wasn't funny? That's hilarious. <laughs> right there. But uh but uh it yeah, the, then the whole idea is hey, we're gonna get together, we're gonna take down the people that murdered our family, and it was it was some solid fun time. There was some, there had a what's his name, Bolo yet. Yeah, Bolo Young. Yeah, he was great as a villain. That dude is that dude is jacked. Like that oh, was yeah. there was there's a fight scene towards the end with one of the Van Dams. That is quite good. So good. So that was a highlight. Uh, the acting between Van Damme's is. Uh, Van Damme. That's how we all. You that can't act with an actual person. Right. I was going to act with myself. Bill is about here. Did I? <laughs> all right. So did I miss anything where it was needed to be identical twins? Because that that was it through my mind. I'm watching this movie, and there's there's moments where they're superimposing one Van Damme next to the other, and I, I could see, and I know that they're not, it's it's the same person. So I'm in my mind, I'm like, why did they make these twins? Was this a reason just to have two Van Dams on the screen? Because I'm like, you could have got another ass kicking actor to play like a fraternal twin mm -hmm. of this. Sure. But they like opted. Yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> a brother of some sort. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I, I, it, I wasn't fully sold on why there was two Van Dams. Like for some reason, I'm I'm watching the movie and I'm thinking about the movie The Parrot Tra- Trap, and I was like, there's a reason that she played two versions of herself. The twin aspect played yeah. into it. There wasn't a really a reason to have two Van Dams in this, and two Van Dams with terrible acting acting off of each other. It didn't fully jive. I maybe I needed a Dennis Rodman to go opposite him. <laughs> well, Someone you have that in double like uh, whatever that is. I, I know. <laughs> double team. So I feel like the, re- the reason you have two Van Dams is so that in the trailer, the voiceover guy can say double the Van Damage. <laughs> yeah. That's legit in the trailer. The elevator pitch to double, double the Van the Dam, guy. double the Van Damage. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, it's it's a flick to get revenge, and each brother gets revenge on the on the person they want to. It's for the most part fun. It just out of the small selection of Van Damme I've seen. It's lower down for me. I, I think I've seen more of his like top tier stuff and this didn't feel top tier. Yeah. But I I get where you were going that it, it's it's a four in the recommendation because he is considered one of the pinnacles of action stars. I get where you're going for. It's it's like a three for the movie for me. Okay. So yeah. I, I I didn't dislike it's fun. <laughs> So, so we, we call it like, uh, you know, like slick back the greasy Van Dam. The my favorite shot is when he's drinking the, the scotch before he kicks us, and then he just shatters the glass in his hand, throws the, the shards of glass towards the camera, and then goes off to kick ass. I just thought there was no point in shattering the glass in his hand, but obviously it looked awesome. I, <laughs> and who's the MMA, uh, Corey, Corey Wilkinson or Corey? There's a, a MMA female fighter that he fights, and that was a good fight with her. Remember that? Oh yeah. I, yeah. I don't remember that. I don't know that. She was very popular at that time. And so she's, uh, I, yeah, I did dig though that they made, they made the Hong Kong Van Dam the, the gritty ass kicking yeah. one. And then the other one is the like Beverly Hills type one that goes to Hong Kong dressed in pink and blue. And <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a pretty good dichotomy between the two, but right. Yeah, maybe I maybe I just needed a uh of Dennis Rodman. <laughs> you need, okay. Well next time I'll give you double team. I I already saw double team. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> I always think double team is double impact. I always mix them up because I haven't seen either of them. I, I'm also <laughs> bad at Van Damme movies. So, I, I'm with you too, Tim, on that. Like I'm I, I grew up also with Arnold and Sly, and I think Van Damme yeah. is Van Damme's in that sort of like Seagal range, you know, there are some really good ones, and the rest, most of the others aren't great. Yeah, and, uh, I don't know, just for whatever reason at the time, I, you know, I thought that was like a really fun, yeah, you know, double the van damage. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. I get where you're going though. Like, I need to, I need to overall see more of Van Damme just because people talk about him like right next to like Arnold and Stallone, and my uh, mind, no. Ar- Arnold don't and Stallone are like top tier. There's not a lot of Van Damme you need to see. If you, I'll give you the list of the seven you need to see and stop. <laughs> There's a lot of hot trash. Kickboxer, Bloodsport, and that's it. Time Cop. <laughs> time Cop's, I, time cop's good. Writer, so laugh at it. <laughs> All right. So for the next one, I am utterly flabbergasted that this is second. I swear I would have. I thought this was going to be an easy third place. I can't believe it. That Brian Bosworth Stone Cold. <laughs> no, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> so, I'm going right. to throw out this movie is cheesy, dumb, fun, but like it's like it knew what it was. And all of the acting, besides Lance Hendrickson, brings it. Everyone yeah. else is pretty terrible at, at acting wise. But Lance Hendrickson is, he's, I mean, he's always oh, there. He's well, he's 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 good too, yeah, but of course I thought, yeah. yeah. But th- this is a super standard run of the mill undercover cop movie. There's there's a gang of uh, you could think of them like Sons of Anarchy type of it's a biker gang that they're they're no good dudes and uh, Brian Bosworth's character has to go undercover as one of them and bring them down. It's fun, man. It is fun. It has one liners. It has a lot of shootouts, a lot of bloody shootouts, some good uh, motorcycle chases. I was utterly shocked, and this movie ends in like a good what fifteen minute type of shootout. 
somewhere yeah, like that. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's these, <laughs> it's got it's got helicopters thrown in. Like, there's a lot that goes on in this cheesy, dumb movie. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm I'm utterly shocked. It's a B movie that knew it was a B movie and embraced the hell out of it. I had a really good freaking time. I would rewatch this one. As as crazy as it is, uh, I'm not sure. Say- I'm not sure when I would rewatch Double Impact. I would totally rewatch Stone Cold. <laughs> I, I I can't believe it, honestly. Uh, I recommend it with Rift Tracks. I've watched it about five times. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not good, but it was entertaining. So I, I guess it's that's all. Like- kind of crappy action movie. <laughs> the dude is built too. Like you see pretty early on, he answers the door in almost nothing. Like he's wearing basically just like a, a, a what, like not a speedo, but he's got like, like a black, like damn near thong on. Yeah, like a thong. Yeah, that thong. That's he yeah. like monitor lizard. That's his pet because it's cool. Like <laughs> Doritos and stuff. I can't remember exactly, but he's like feeding it like beer and Doritos. It's yeah. great. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> The story is super paint by numbers, though. It's an undercover cop movie. You've seen yep. fifty of them already. They're it's the same thing, but it's fun. It made me mm-hmm. smile. It. <laughs> I don't. This Brian Bosworth is a terrible actor. I don't know that I would seek his stuff out, but I had a good time. You may have his only thing. <laughs> I don't think there's a no, star Stone making vehicle Cold, you got there. Yeah, Bosworth collection, <laughs> new box set from Mill Creek. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm shocked. So recommendation wise, like I felt like you were throwing darts at a board. So like it's a it's a three in that I didn't know if you knew where you were going with it, but you somehow landed that it's like a three, it's like a three and a half movie wise. It's a uh, damn fun movie. Yeah, I was shocked. I just <laughs> I thought for sure this would be my least favorite of of the three. So. Damn, man. Damn. <laughs> I mean, it's... Now, Tiger Blue said what I said, too. It's like, if you've seen Van Damme's Hard Target, you get Lance Hendrickson in that with him. And that movie's awesome. Yeah, I have that one. I need to watch John that. Rue, that totally that's can't probably can't my watch. favorite Van Damme. It's Hard Target. Stone Cold yeah. is fun. Oh, it's so stupid. <laughs> Hawk, have you seen Stone Cold? I haven't seen it yet, but I, I'm, I'm tempted now. Next Kino sale. Get it. In fact, look, I'll be honest, when he said that to you, I'm like, Derek, why do you hate Tim so much? I mean, why? That's Honestly, this is no more offensive than a Jean Claude Van Damme movie to me because I know. Well, I but I mean, Van Damme's got some pedigree to an extent. Brian Bosworth has Stone Cold. <laughs> like, I gotta say that. It's awesome. He did yeah, I mean, some, <laughs> some serious ass kicking in the movie, though. Like, the dude is built. They specifically made several scenes where he's wearing no shirt. He's freaking built. He's throwing people against the walls in a bar, and he's he's so, kicking some ass. Would you say Brian then is more like Dolph Lundgren, where he looks great but can't quite act to save his life? Closer. I mean, he doesn't talk like he doesn't struggle to finish a sentence like Dolph, but uh, <laughs> but he's not a good actor. Like he's yeah. almost no one in this movie is good actor. But Lance Henderson, he's in his own league. Saves the movie. The guy who yeah. plays his partner is good too. Like this yeah. com- the, the comic relief partner. I can't think of the actor's name, but he's oh, the, the guy with the curly hair. He's been like raising Arizona and a whole bunch of stuff, but he's always, yeah. I like, him, but that's just me. He doesn't do much in the movie, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's shocking. It There's lots of boobs in it and stuff. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Hang on. I'm going to add the cart. Yeah. It's a fun movie though. Like I, I, I was happy Tim already owned it. I was like, oh, perfect. Okay, now you have an excuse. I to think watch. I bought this because like a while ago, Jagoda Blue talked about it, like okay. raving about it. Like I'm gonna check this movie out, and then I bought it, and it just sat on the shelf. So then when when Derek recommended, I'm like, all right, here's a chance for me to finally watch this movie that's just been sitting there. That's my favorite is when you guys recommend stuff that we've all bought and it just sits here. Yeah. I yep. mean, I, unfortunately, like, none of the ones I had, I own. I, I, I had to, uh, the digital code for one. I had to stream and pay for one, and then the other was streaming for free. So I got lucky. Yeah, I rented the uh, breakdown on Amazon. So now for my last one, 
Mike gets top spot often, it feels like. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he recommended to me Equalizer 3. I'm going to say I had zero like ambition to see this one because I actually thought the trailer was not good. I enjoyed the first two, but I remember seeing the trailer in theaters for this one. And I was like, oh, God, this doesn't look good. It looks like they should have just ended. I don't want to see this. It doesn't look good. I watched the movie, and I was like, holy shit. It's actually it's, it's pretty damn good. The trailer did no service to the movie, I don't feel like. I, I was highly entertained. I thought I thought based off the, the trailer that it was going to be going heavier into the drama and it wasn't going to deliver the action that I was, I guess, expecting. It, it does. There's plenty of action. I mean, the movie starts essentially with a bloodbath and uh it's good it's it's right on par I've, this is a solid franchise like i think i'll cross all three it's a very solid franchise but this is basically his character in the twilight ready to almost retire and uh there's of course the bad mobsters in this town in, in italy doing the standard you know pay us to have your business and he doesn't like that he just wants to live peacefully so he takes them on in equalizer type way. It's got <laughs> lots, of, lots of blood and violence and Denzel being Denzel. I enjoyed it. Like six minutes. Mm -hmm. Anyone else see it besides Mike? I hadn't seen part three. No, in fact, I haven't seen any of them. I, I was going to say, I haven't seen any of them. Yeah. We're down <laughs> here. Like, no don't ever see. I like stone cold. So, you know, my action. <laughs> I was so gonna say, Tim, go did they like the, the third one the best out of the three, or how would you rank that? No, I, I would still – I still think I would rank in order of one, two, three. Two gets a lot of crap, but I really like the hurricane setting. I think the hurricane setting is a lot of fun. But one is its own league, I feel like. It's, it's one, then a, a step down for two and three. But as a whole, it's a very solid, fun – I'm the same. I would rank them the exact same. I love one. One's yeah, one, one is so freaking good. Uh, Rob, I <laughs> the ending is badass, and I already called out. The ending is really freaking good. But, like, plot-wise, it's very – it's run-of-the-mill plot. It's it's just – it's well executed at the, at the Capitol. Like, it's, it's shot well with lots of good action. But, like, story-wise, it didn't – it didn't break any ground. It, it, it was an undercover cop movie. Yeah, yeah. surprisingly yeah. well made for how like crappy you would expect it to be. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny though. What year was that in, Tim? 90. 90. Great, yeah, I, re I remember the trailer back in the day, and I did think that looks pretty good. And I don't know how I didn't end up seeing it because you know I like those kind of cheesy action movies, but yeah, uh, it, it's I kind of want to see it now. I I even, think you make it it's... even more than Equalizer, oddly. Yeah, I'm <laughs> more interested to see that. <laughs> you only yeah, watch one movie, equalizer crazy. i especially don't want to give like anything away because that's brand brand new i don't i don't want to give any hints away in a 2023 movie that only came to disc a couple of months ago but for anyone that enjoys uh equalizer it's fun it's more equalizer yeah. they leave it open that you could have a four or i'm okay with it ending where it ends it's good it's a solid it's a franchise solid trilogy okay yeah so I, yeah, I'm overall very happy with them. Uh, the recommendation wise, I, uh, I get where Mike's coming from because he, he has to recommend newer stuff to me when it comes to some of these things, and he knew yeah. he, he hit it. So it's it's a four with the recommendation. You, you hit it right, and it's a it's a four for the movie. It's both, and Tiger brought brought this up by the way. It's almost it, it's man on fire again, though. We get Dakota and and Denzel oh, back 20, together twenty years later. It's cool. Yeah, man yeah. on fire is not bad. Dakota's character felt a little just kind of there. I will say that she doesn't really accomplish much. It's like, hey, there's Dakota in the movie, and she does stuff, but like, <laughs> it's it's his movie. Her uh, her plot is eh. It's just kind of used for a connection tissue to the other movies. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen. Is it Dakota Fanning Johnson? Which Dakota? Oh, sorry, Fa Fanning, because oh, she's, Fanning. she's the little she girl from Man on Fire. Oh, I haven't seen that either. So there you go. You didn't see Man on Fire? No. <laughs> I would have given you that as a recommendation. Oh yeah. 
It's Man, okay. I'm, I'm not, look, Cellular, I'm, I'm very, very happy with Cellular. That's, that's like, again, that's like unhinged. It was so good, like right out of the gate. Yeah, I did see that, yeah. I, I worked at the theater when he came out, too, and for some reason I never saw that. Man yeah, on fire. All right, see all these Denzel movies? I'm just, uh, maybe. <laughs> well, they all run together in my brain. That's why I, kill, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Man on Fire is a good one. Yes, here, you must watch Man oh, on Fire. Oh, Tiger Blue, getting on me. Yeah, uh, it, I mean, does it have Dennis Rodman in it? Because <laughs> no, de no Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <That's Sure. Winston. laughs> so let's let's run through again just to for anyone that came in later. What's your favorite recommendation from from people? Which I think we'll start with you, Hawk. You already said it, but just well, well, I mean, like ranking them. I'm still gonna if we're gonna go off that though. I will say my favorite was Cellular. That was my favorite recommendation. My number one was Derek's oh as an overall pick but yeah. favorite because it hit like speed and time and performance and cast like is is ironically my number two pick so I'm gonna go <laughs> off the grid and say my favorite was cellular nice uh mine I would say yeah it was breakdown by a hair I'd say like I think hard rain if I didn't have to watch it with ads on Pluto might have been on par with each other but I think objectively just as a movie I think breakdown was better between the two, so I'd go breakdown. Plus, that ending was great. <laughs> it is great. My yeah, I don't think I've seen most of everybody else's recommendations. I remember Cellular though from when I was a kid. I saw that one in theaters, and that's a really good, entertaining movie. So yeah. if I have to pick something that's not the one I got, I'd probably go Cellular out of my choices. You know, Con Air, of course. So. Con Air is amazing. <laughs> and then. Uh, Equalizer, like I said, for, for me, and uh, I saw everything else on the panel. So <laughs> overall, though, I I freaking love Breakdown. When when that came up as a, as Derek didn't see it, I was excited for Derek to see Breakdown. That's so good. good. Yeah, yep. I, just, I just needed like someone. Someone's, someone's comment was like, "It's like The Vanishing, but not as good." I'm like, "It is like The Vanishing, but not as good." <laughs> <laughs> Vanishing is like the dramatic version of Breakdown. Breakdown is real good. Mm -hmm. so, uh, does anyone mention? I haven't seen Ricochet in a long oh, time. Ricochet, I remember liking that a lot. That would be a I great revisit. That I yeah. think that's on Blu-ray, right? Pretty yep. sure. Maybe think of the wrestler. That's all I thought. I can't think of the movie. Does anyone? Yeah, no, I, we we didn't mention it tonight, but uh, now I want to rewatch that. We are now. Yeah, John <laughs> Mico. Yeah, so that, that's what we got on our on our recommendations. We have a the regular Collectors Club episode will be coming up on I think it's the twenty fourth, correct? Yeah. Sunday, yeah. The last yes. Sunday of the month, yeah, twenty fourth. Yes. So Sunday the twenty fourth, it'll be on my channel. That's going to be our standard Collectors Club episode we do, and that one will be focused on action as well. But in our our typical Collectors Club format, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, these guys are all ready to talk more action yet again, right? So oh, yeah, can't keep it down. <laughs> So, uh, did you guys have anything you wanted to mention going on before in the next, I don't know, week or two? You want to mention? Uh, no, about the next week or two, but the next Collectors Club will be on my channel. So, next yes. month, I'll be doing the recommendation, and I'll be doing the Collectors Club theme to be revealed at the next Collectors <laughs> Club. So, be there to find out about that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Anyone uh, else? I don't have anything coming up on my channel per se but uh i did a couple post oscar videos that are there to watch oscarology-esque videos things of that nature other than that yeah collector's club coming up on the 24th watch that yeah i got videos dropping every day almost so definitely some great stuff there if anybody wants to stop on by I saw a lot of great comments in the chat today by the way so amazing audience tonight so round of yes. applause for the audience yeah, yeah. i crazy. saw some new faces in there so yeah. any new yeah. faces feel sure. free to stop on by the channel hit the sub yeah and, uh, enjoy the content i always got like 39 now, so. watching right now so. yeah audience killed it tonight audience killed it you all are freaking awesome so yeah, that that is uh that's all we have. This has been a blast talking action. I love these recommendation streams so freaking much. I love I love this stuff. So it's like our version all. of a book club. Yeah, right? yeah. it's not a book club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, ladies. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Watch a movie.